Cast your mind 10 years into the future and who do you think is going to be the dominant teams in the Premier League? Well, I'm using FM24's beta to predict just that in this video. Here we are, 10 years into the future, and this is the final Premier League table after 10 years. And as you can see, Arsenal have won it in the 10th season. But have they been the dominant team? Is this just a one-off? We will find out all of that on this video, and we'll go through the teams, see what managers they have, see what trophies they've won as well, and what their squads look like 10 years into the future. And if you like that kind of content, don't forget to like this video. It helps with the performance, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel but now let's check out the history let's go through who has won what in the past 10 years in the premier league and as we can see it's been dominated by two teams it's no surprise to see manchester city winning all those back-to-back -back titles then arsenal came in with their dominance of three back-to-back -back titles but the most shocking thing here is in 25 26 season we have Aston Villa finishing third in the Premier League. And I know that will make at least one of my subscribers very, very happy. Tottenham finishing runners-up to Arsenal in that third season where they had three back-to-back -back Premier Leagues is a bit disappointing as a Spurs fan, as you can see, wearing the canary yellow shirt here. But then Man City broke their dominance and then Arsenal came back with a vengeance and absolutely dominated the Premier League in this 10-year Premier League sim. I mean, Arsenal fans, you are in for such a great time during the next 10 years if FM24 beta is to be believed. But let's check out the Arsenal squad that got you there. Well, it seems like the board on FM24 have trusted the process here with Mikel Arteta and you've still got your key men in the squad like Martin Odegaard and Boyoka Saka being captain and vice captain of the squad. Gunners fans will be absolutely delighted with the dominance that they've had in this sim. Will they be delighted with their squad? Of course, there will be new gens in this squad, so we won't go through those ones, but we will have a look at players that are actually real in real life. And the first shock that I can see here is Tottenham defender Mickey van der Ven has ended up back at Arsenal after a career at Real Madrid and PSG. He's come to Arsenal to win trophies, as Arsenal fans would say. And as a Spurs fan, this is very disappointing to see our best centre-back in real life end up at Arsenal. It's like Sol Campbell all over again. Who else do Arsenal have? They have one of my favourite Bulgarian players in, Philippe Krasti. Not a world beater, I wouldn't say. A very much a squad player for this Arsenal team. But a cheap beast if you can go out and get him. I always recommend this player. He's got bags of bags of talent. Looking at other players that they've got, we'll have a look at some of the mainstays in the squad. Gabriel Martinelli, 61 caps, 29 goals for Brazil, 20 agility, pacey, techie. The stats are all there. He's got 161 goals in 424 games for the Gunners. Didn't go anywhere else. Always stayed at Arsenal. And I know Arsenal fans will be gassed to see that one. As well as their star boy staying at the club as well. Saka, 450 grand a week. 146 caps for England, 75 goals as well. That's insane for Saka. What a player that is. 181 goals and 508 appearances for the Arsenal as well. And his stats are absolutely cracked. 31 years of age. He's still got five, six years left in him. And he will probably go on to be one of Arsenal's greatest ever players in this simulation at least. Another one that Arsenal fans are all very excited about is Ethan Wineri. The 16-year-old in real life has got bags of bags of potential. Already making his Arsenal debut as well he looks absolutely cracked in this save they've loaned him out a few times to fulham to burnley to milan but at arsenal he's played 81 games scored 11 goals and looks set for a big future at the club only being 26 years of age he could be arsenal's heartbeat after odegaard goes from the club but my favorite signing of this and i'm not a gunners fan but this will be absolutely Brilliant if you are a Gunners fan. Shaquille Van Persie, Robin Van Persie's son, has ended up at Arsenal. We know his dad went to Man United and it was all kinds of controversy. But you've ended up with his son, who plays for England, which is an absolute shock. He's England's number nine at the moment on this simulation. But he's a beast, lads. And I mean, for Arsenal fans that do like Van Persie, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But your squad's absolutely stacked. You've won tons and tons of Premier Leagues as well. What more could you want from Mikel Arteta? Just trust the process, lads. Let's take a look now at the second most dominant team in the Premier League on this simulation. And it's no surprise it is Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. And it's no surprise Erling Haaland is still there because he's an absolute unit. And they brought in 
Ronald Arejo from Barcelona. So another Pep Guardiola Barcelona link right there. They've been absolutely beastly in this simulation, winning a ton of Premier Leagues. Not as many as Arsenal, but the second most dominant side in the Premier League. And if we take a look at their squad, they've got players, as we mentioned, like Ronald Arejo, getting on a bit in this simulation, but it's been a mainstay in their team for 253 games. An absolute top quality ball playing centre back, wide centre back as well, can play in a five, can play in a four. What a player Arejo is, and he's an unbelievable beast for Man City in this sim. They've also gone and bought from Chelsea Enzo Fernandez, which is a bit of a shock to be honest. I think it's a little bit mm, take it or leave it for me for Enzo, but he's done well at Manchester City, 150 games, 11 goals. Stats look fairly decent. He's won trophies. That's all I can say about that one. And then if we look at some of the Man City youth prospects, Rico Lewis is the one that's on everyone's lips, to be honest. He's an absolute beast. One of the best right backs on the game. The English Cafu, I'm going to call him. He's got good pace, good technique, got decent mentals as well. Only six England caps, but it's a shame he hasn't really developed into a better version of himself. But he is one of the best PA potential right backs on the game. And as if we go down the list, we'll take a look at some of the mainstays. Phil Foden, it's Phil Foden, absolute beast. What more can you say? 213 goals in 500 games for Man City. Beast in it. He is their version of Saka. Is he better than Saka? Is Saka better than him? That debate will rumble on for years. I can imagine I can imagine that one keep going. And then Erling Haaland, 32 years of age. His stats have remained the same. He's got 238 goals in four, nearly 400 games for the club. Goal every other game. I mean, I expect more from the robot but he's been a beast for Manchester City in this simulation. We're going to take a look now at the managers at each club that's in the Premier League at this specific time, 10 years on in the club. And we're going to start off with Arsenal because they are alphabetically first. And obviously, as we've just seen, Mikel Arteta has been at the club. He's won six Premier Leagues, 14 cup wins, including Champions League winners as well. So Arsenal fans, all you have to do is sit back and wait and you'll finally get your hands on that Champions League trophy. Villa, well, no major honours for Aston Villa, sadly, but they did finish third one season and they've had some some fairly strange managers, shall we say. Fernando Torres was there for 210 days. Yagobo Araste, I've ruined his name, but he was there for five years after MRA left the club and currently being managed by Thomas Frank for two years. Sadly, nothing for Villa. Brentford, no major trophies either. It looks like it's been dominated by Arsenal and Man City at this point. But they did have Lionel Scaloni in there for three years. The World Cup winning manager with Argentina was Brentford manager, but couldn't do anything there. And they're currently managed by Albert Riera. If you remember him, if you know, you know. As we know, Brighton are probably the most well-run club in the Premier League. And they've had some good managers but the first manager to win them a trophy was Dejan Stankovic. What a player he was as well. Unbelievable beast. Check his YouTube highlights out if you're too young to remember him. Won the Carabao Cup with them. And then more recently, Brendan Rodgers, back from the abyss, has won them the Europa League, the Community Shield and the FA Cup. So big success there at Brighton. Chelsea, did they have big success? They really didn't have too much success. They had Pochettino. Then they had Simeone who came in and won them the Conference League. After that, Vincenzo Italiano won them an FA Cup, but they're currently being managed by the current Tottenham manager, Ange Postacoglu. Big Ange. Didn't have any success in the three years he's been there so far. Chelsea have been a club in distress as they are in real life. Palace doing what Palace do after Roy Hodgson, having so many managers. Robbie Keane, Paddy McCarthy, David Moyes, Gary Issa, Jesse March, Roberto De Zervi, Marco Silva. They've just been bouncing around managers like there's no tomorrow with no success. The only shock here for Everton is that Antonio Conte is manager, and then after that, they came back to Sean Dyche after being there for two years. No trophies, but it's Everton. Fulham, very similar situation like Crystal Palace, bouncing around managers. They did win the Sky Bet Championship under Miguel Angel Ramirez, and they've had Steven Gerrard as manager, but that's about it for them. Leeds are back in the Premier League at this point and they've got Philip Clement, the current Rangers manager, and he's been there for four years. No major success, but being in the Premier League is big for Leeds fans. Liverpool are a team that are always overpowered on Football Manager, but Jurgen Klopp has left the club and they've had some shocking managerial appointments. I'm not going to lie. Luis Enrique was a good one, won the Super Cup with them. And then they came to old Tottenham and Chelsea manager Andre Villas-Boas, who's obviously back in management after the Dakar rally. And he won the Conference League with them and the Carabao Cup. So he had some success there. Fair play to him. But the shocking one is Aaron Creswell, West Ham left back, has won the English FA Cup and the Carabao Cup twice with Liverpool. 
unbelievable managerial appointments, but no Premier League success there for Liverpool. City, as we saw earlier, the second most dominant team in the Premier League after Arsenal. And it's no surprise Pep Guardiola's won 22 Cups, 9 league titles. What a beast he is. Obviously, there's league titles and trophies that come before this 10-year sim. But yeah, Man City, unbelievable. Man United, like in real life, have been in turmoil on this save. They had Eric Ten Hag, who only won the Carabao Cup in real life. So no trophies for him on this sim. And then they got sacked. They had Maurizio Sarri, didn't do anything. Nick Cox was there for 63 days and won them the Europa League. Pioli came in and won them the European South American Club Challenge winners, which is a new trophy in, in this year's FM. And that's all they've won. And they've had Didier Deschamps there as well, World Cup winning manager, and Ruben Amarim. It's it's pretty terrible outlook for Man United. The only shock for Newcastle is that Eddie Howe has won trophies at Newcastle and he's won more than Zidane Zidane. He was there for 10 years, Eddie Howe, so only just left the club this season on the save. And replaced by Zizou, who hasn't won anything yet, but Eddie Howe managed to win the Conference League, Community Shield, FA Cup and Carabao Cup. So I think Newcastle fans will take that, to be honest. Skipping now to Spurs, and we have had some shocking managerial appointments, I have to say. Ange left the club not winning nothing, replaced by Zizou, who won us a Carabao Cup and a Conference League. So as a Spurs fan, I will absolutely take that, and having Zidane as manager has just blown my mind. We then went and got Stefano Pioli, who won us a Europa League, and this new European South American Club Challenge winners, which I think is like, you know, the Club World Cup, if I'm honest. And then he left, and we got replaced with Didier Deschamps, so, I mean, I said shocking at the start, but I'll take it. It's a pretty bleak outlook for West Ham fans, and it's a shame to see. They got relegated under David Moyes, and then Roberto De Zerbi came in and won them the Skybet Championship. After that, they've gone through managers like I've gone through hot dinners. Vincenzo Montella, Mark Van Bommel, Danny Cowley even in at one point. And look at all these names. And now they're currently managed by... One of the best young wonder kids in the early 2000s, Javier Saviola, who didn't live up to his potential and potentially isn't going to live up to his potential as a manager either. Last on this list is Wolverhampton Wanderers. And all they've done is win the Skybet Championship and having some very questionable managers come in. Most of them I have never heard of, but Gary O'Neill left, Sean Dyche came in. That's probably the only one that I've ever heard of. Michael Hartman won them the Skybet Championship, but the future's bleak for Wolves as it looks like in real life as well. And if you love these simulation type contents, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because we'll be doing all the leagues in Football Manager this year.